Hi guys, hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to our channel and in this video, I'm going to talk about role-based access control for Microsoft Defender for Endpoints. Now, this is a slightly complicated uh, feature which you have to understand because it's not only about just creating custom roles in terms of limiting access. It's also about how you can define scopes for different types of users. That means I have a user group or a SOC team, let's say in region A, then they should only be able to view the devices which exist in region A, right? And that's the reason why I have divided this concept into two different parts altogether. And it's my recommendation to watch both the videos in one, that means this one I will be covering and I will be explaining how exactly RBAC works. Whereas in the next one, I'll show you the portal configuration. Okay. So if you're watching this series from the beginning in the last video, we have discussed about some of the prerequisites that you need to know before you can get started with Microsoft Defender for Endpoints. Whereas the core agenda of this video will be understanding the default roles which exist in Azure AD, which once assigned to any user, they can actually go ahead and do the configuration or they can access Microsoft Defender for Endpoint portal. Then we'll talk about the dedicated RBAC capability that's available in Microsoft Defender for Endpoints portal, which is our target to understand in terms of how we should implement uh, the typical SOC tiering model in terms of using these RBAC capabilities. And the most important feature which will help you achieve a SOC tiering model is device group itself. So we are going to talk about device groups as well and how exactly they work, what exactly the purpose behind having device groups in place. Okay. So to begin with the easiest concepts first, the default roles that exist in Azure 80, which will give full access to some of your SOC analysts, whomsoever these role has been assigned as security admin and global admin. And then if you want to give somebody read only permissions, then you can assign security reader permissions. Now to navigate to these options is very simple. All you have to do is you have to go to Azure AD and then you have to click on roles and administrators and then you can find these three roles getting listed over here which is global admin security admin or security reader and then you can get the respective roles assigned okay now when we talk about our back of windows defender for endpoint or microsoft defender for endpoint this is the section where you have to go so the question comes how you'll come here you'll go to settings and then click on roles and then you'll see all the uh, custom roles getting listed over here. Now, when you will come to this particular console for the very first time, this is what you will get as an option, which you have to enable, which is turn on roles. And to make this change, you must be the global admin or security admin in Azure AD. Now, once you will click on turn on roles, then this is the role that will get by default listed. This is the custom one, which I have created. Okay, so now let's talk about how exactly our back or SOC tiering model can be achieved with Windows Defender for Endpoints. Okay, think about this. If I talk about a typical enterprise, there will be multiple regions and there will be dedicated SOC analysts that will be taking care of these regions altogether. Okay, so from a tiering model, if you think about this, that I have SOC analyst who are dedicated to fix machines or who, or the scope for those SOC analysts is specifically Asia. Similarly, I have some SOC analysts who are there for specifically controlling all the threats or all the machines or all the other aspects of security, typically for North America region, right? But if I talk about SOC tiering, Apart from making sure that we have dedicated resources for dedicated regions, there will be some tiering model as well. So likewise, SOC tier 1 should only have the read only permissions or SOC tier 2 should be able to read only and do certain assessments, right? 
these are two different scopes altogether. Now, when I say these are two different scopes altogether, what do I mean by this? Think about this, that when I say SOC Asia, when I'm referring to this particular team, I'm specifically very focused in terms of defining the scope of the changes or the scope of the actions which this team can take apart from tiering model. What do I mean by this? That if any SOC analyst of Asian team is signing in to Microsoft Defender for Endpoints, which is let's say securitycenter.windows.com, they should only be able to see the machines which have been scoped for them. What do I mean by this? That I have a group of users who are let's say tier one of SOC team that sits in Asia and when they try to sign in to Microsoft Defender for Endpoints, they can only see the machines that exist in Asia. That means the machines that belongs to the users who are working in a specific region. In this case, it will be Asia. All the other machines will not be shown to them. Okay, just to show you an example and what will be our end goal or which state we have to reach. I'll show you a quick example right now. This is the SOC tier one of Asia. Think about this. This is a group which has all the members who are SOC analyst. And this is my user. This is that particular user which exists in uh, the SOC tier one team of Asia. And if I will sign in with this particular user, which is IDP, I'm getting read only permission. And I'm only getting one device listed here. Think about this. I'm only getting one device listed here, right? But if I will sign in with the global admin, let's say I'm, I'm signing in with a user which has all the permissions, you can see I'm getting all the devices listed. So as of now, there are only two devices. This is just to show you the two different scopes apart from defining the capability or apart from defining the restrictions that you are applying in terms of privileged access, you also have to scope that which devices should be visible to what kind of users. The same concept applies to those users which exist in North America region. That means if somebody who is a part of SOC team, be it tier one or tier two in North America region, when they are signing in, they are only getting the devices that belongs to North America region. Now, what do I mean by this? If you will see this user, which is MFA, this guy is getting MDI hyphen CW object device typically, whereas the other one is getting co-work. But if I will try to sign in, sign in with global admin, I'm getting both the devices. Right. And I have also defined the restriction in terms of the changes which these two accounts can make. OK, so if I talk about the third aspect is very much obvious and is a default uh, role that exists that can be assigned to anyone. That means a global admin role. In this case, the account with which I'm signed in as of now is the global admin of directory itself. That's why I was able to make or I was able to view everything but if you want somebody to have global admin access or the highest privilege of this particular portal itself then you have to assign them this particular role altogether from this particular section okay so now if you talk about how to achieve this particular stage or how to have this kind of tiering model think about this step number one which is required as of now is the creation of roles itself. That means before you can assign any role to any user, the first step is to have those roles defined itself, right? And then once you have the roles in place, you can actually scope that to different groups. That means I can have a tier one role scoped to the users who exist in SOC tier one Asia group. That means SOC analyst who should be able to perform the tier one activities on the endpoints that exist in Asia should be in this particular group. Similarly, the SOC analyst for North America region tier one and the same concept applies 
to SOC tier 2 as well. But the most important part and I should say the most crucial part in this entire configuration which requires the most attention is scoping the capabilities or scoping the restrictions to view only some set of devices that means when as a SOC analyst I'm signing in to securitycenter.windows.com or security.microsoft.com I'm only able to view the devices which have been scoped for my privileges now the question comes how it will happen this is something which will be done with device groups now the question comes where exactly this setting exists is the next one to roles itself this is the most important configuration in terms of understanding how our back is going to work you need device groups and then based on these device groups you can actually define the access for different tiers now what do i mean by this that what if i say that i will create a group in such a way so that all the devices that exist in the Asia region will be a part of this particular group and then I will get the respective roles mapped to this particular device group so that if the user who has tier 1 privilege signs in to securitycenter.windows.com should be able to perform activities on the devices that exist in this particular group and if the tier 2 user signs into securitycenter.windows.com they should be able to perform their own activities provided the SOC team of Asia including tier 1 and tier 2 cannot view any of the device that exist in any other group or in any other region altogether and the same concept applies to North America aspect as well okay so what we have understood from an RBAC capability the first thing is that you need to define roles custom roles that exist in Microsoft Defender for Endpoint Portal itself then you have to make sure that you have device groups so that you can map the user access and then when the user will sign in to securitycenter.windows.com they'll get the respective permissions altogether okay so let's talk about a quick summary of what all we have discussed in this video we have discussed the roles that exist in Azure AD which can be assigned to users so that they can get access to Microsoft Defender for Endpoint Portal we have discussed about how the RBAC part works what are the two different aspects the first one is the tiering model itself wherein you are defining the restrictions that will be applied in terms of the actions which a user can take and the other aspect is limiting the devices that can be viewed by a specific SOC analyst now this is something which was the scope for SOC tiering model machine group and machine tagging itself in the next video I'm going to talk about the RBAC portal configuration where I'm going to show you the end-to-end -end configuration that I have done and how exactly things are working in my environment now if you think that this channel is helping you to learn anything new please feel free to subscribe and share this video with your technical community. Thank you so much. Thanks for your time. Have a great day ahead. Bye-bye.